So let's bring in FEMA Administrator Brock Long. Mr. Long, thanks for joining us this morning. And tell us what FEMA is doing right now. Uh, good morning. So right now, the uh, focus is on supporting all of the governors from Louisiana to Florida with their life-saving uh, missions. Um, over the past uh, 48 to 72 hours, we've been working with them uh, around the clock to pre-stage commodities and, our incident, and embed our incident management teams uh, with the emergency management directors in their, e in their EOCs. Um, the most important thing about this storm is this is one of the fastest moving storms in in the Gulf in the Gulf Coast since uh, they've started to record tropical history and so that's very dangerous for for many reasons one while it's a 45 mile per hour tropical storm right now you have to add to it the forward speed of 23 miles an hour so basically hurricane force winds are just right at hurricane force winds are going to pass through uh, many portions of Alabama into Tennessee uh, and then also when it interacts with the, uh, the mountains within western North Carolina, a lot of rainfall is going to occur from this as well. And, and we know it's the fourth hurricane so far this year. We have about two months left in hurricane season. What are your concerns going forward? Do you have enough people? Do you have enough money? Uh, money's not the issue. Congress has been on top of that working with us. Uh, back on October 1, uh, we had another $6.7 billion added to the Disaster Relief Fund, and we continue to update them on a regular basis and we'll ask for supplementals uh, as needed. Uh, in regards to resources, of course we're strained. Uh, you know, the bottom line is, is that over uh, nearly 85% of my entire agency is deployed right now. Uh, we're still working massive issues in Harvey, uh, Irma, as well as the issues in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and now this one. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that we're positioned to support Nate, uh, you know, very well. Uh, the next thing is, is that, you know, some of the fail safes that we have are through mutual aid agreements with uh, states to be able to call upon emergency managers from, from other states and around the states if we uh, continue to have uh, more disasters. And, and Mr. Lang, let's, let's turn to Puerto Rico. The mayor of San Juan tweeting again this morning saying, power collapses in San Juan Hospital with two patients being transferred out, have requested support from FEMA, Brock, nothing. And she also says, increasingly painful to understand the American people want to help and U.S. government does not want to help. We need water. What's your reaction to that? <laughs> we filtered out the mayor a long time ago. We don't have time for the political noise. The bottom line is, is that um, we are making progress every day in conjunction with the governor. And uh, in regards to the power failure, we're restringing a very fragile system every day. Uh, as we make progress, simple thunderstorms pass through, knock the progress out. Um, rebuilding, uh, rebuilding Puerto Rico is going to be a greater conversation for the Congress in conjunction with the governor on how they're you know, what the way forward is in the future of Puerto Rico. But in regards to the power outages and the hospitals, we built an entire 911 system. We monitor the hospital system daily. And so if there is a power failure at a hospital, which we've seen two of, um, you know, over this past week, we're actually life flighting the ICU patients out of those hospitals onto the USS Comfort. And we continue to stabilize that situation with hospitals. But uh, as far as the political noise, we filter that out, keep our heads down, and continue to make progress and, and uh, push forward to restoring essential, essential functions for Puerto Rico. Okay, thanks very much for joining us, Mr. Long. Thank you.